Welcome back everyone to another episode on the Cornerstone SMP. This is taking me back to season 2. Uh, I'm running through the cherry blossom biome behind Hobbiton and the minigame district right now because I am looking for bee nests. I think it's nests, not hives, right? The ones that generate naturally that you can't craft. Um, because I've been trying to expand the stock variety at Comb and Copper, my honey and copper shop a bit. And I know people sometimes, including myself, like to use bee nests as a fancy building block. And even beehives are pretty popular as like a floor block, right? So I want to have both of those in stock. Um, of course the nests will be a bit more expensive than the hives, because they're a lot more difficult to get, but Earlier, oh, there's one right over there. Earlier, I already found almost a shulker full of these here in the cherry blossoms. So, <laughs> this is a good biome to get them at least for now until. Oh, hey. And they have frogs here. Terrible, that's crazy. Until I have depleted all of this area, <laughs> it will be a good place to get it. I got another full shulker of bee nests. I think that's enough for now, so I'm gonna put that into storage here. Um, yeah, this shop... Oh gosh. <laughs> um, it's pretty small, there's not a whole lot of space and it's definitely filling in quite a bit now. So we of course have all the honey variants, we have the honeycomb, honeycomb block, the honey bottles and the honey block. And now we also have beehives, 16 for one diamond and then bee nests which is one nest for three diamonds so definitely more expensive but these are just a lot harder to get than these guys <laughs> and just a warning to my server members if you buy the bee nests a lot of them will absolutely have bees inside um but yeah kind of enjoyed going out and collecting those it was like a little treasure hunt but now there are definitely a lot of homeless bees in our cherry biomes i did also recently stock up or uh, add fully oxidized copper to the shop, which I haven't made any sales yet, but I'm selling 8 for 1 diamond. So, double as expensive as the normal. But I feel like this is already pretty cheap, 16 for 1. I think it's very cheap for copper. Um, so we'll see if that leads to any profit. Um, there hasn't really been... There's always like a small steady trickle from the shop of diamonds, but definitely emphasis on small, because <laughs> most of the stuff is pretty cheap, especially the honey because um, of competition and I know people can only need so much honey but I think we did make yeah we made some candle sales which is nice I am trying to figure out how to get people to build more with copper and honey they are very nice building blocks um, but the best way of doing that is probably just by leading by example right transition and we teleported <laughs> um, look at this place this is... okay, we need to fly out for you guys to appreciate this truly. There's really gorgeous floating island about 3,000 blocks out from spawn. There's a smaller one over here as well, but this is the main island. I think it's so pretty with the autumn trees. Um, and I know a lot of those will be gone by the time we're done with this place. But I'm hoping I can leave at least some of these up because, yeah, they're just so pretty. I love the autumn vibes. But what is this place gonna be? Um, basically, this will be our first themed building district. If you don't count stuff like Hobbiton or um, mini game, the mini game district, but the first themed district that's basically just focused on pretty builds. Big medieval town on top of this island, um, and it's for the whole community. So whoever wants to on the server can join and build here as well, and just keep it to the medieval theme. So it'll be our medieval district basically. And I have a spot picked out here for my first build, um, or the whole first build on this place, which is pretty exciting. And I'll show you some of the blocks I'm planning on using before I get before I jump into the time lapse. So of course, lots of decorative blocks. Um, but then I'm also trying to be experimental again with the block palette. Of course, we've got some birch logs. We've got you know like some more basic stuff like dark oak, deep slate, tough. Um, but then we also have cherry and grimson and nether bricks 
and the honeycomb. Because <laughs> again, it's a very nice building block, I promise. Um, I'm gonna proof. I'm gonna prove that it looks good and then and and I hope it might motivate some people to see it for what it truly is. But yeah, let's let's just get going. That's the first medieval district building finished officially. Well, actually, that's not true at all. Um, the outside of it is finished officially. <laughs> the inside is non-existent. I'm kind of debating on what this should be. And currently, <clears throat> my best idea is put a bunch of chests in there and have it be a community storage building. So where we kind of share our resources for this whole district. But yeah, I think... I think I hit my goals with this one. <laughs> I managed to incorporate the honeycomb and I think, I mean, it definitely stands out, right? But I, I think it works still. I don't think a large wall of honeycomb ever looks very good, but as a detail block, it's very fun and very, like, adds a lot of brightness and color. I love how the birch logs look together with the calcite. That's actually, that's something that I discovered while building this in creative that I feel like I want to use a lot more in the future. <laughs> and then the roof is just very, like a very happy, colorful roof. We've got a gradient from nether brick to crimson to the stripped cherry logs to cherry blanks. Um, and it just, I dread to build it in a way where it just gets brighter towards the, the top, like the sun's shining on it from above. I tried to bring in shading over here as well, you can see. We are pretty bright with the honeycomb and birch at the bottom, then gets a little bit darker with the jungle. And then directly under the roof we've got the dark oak. Yeah, so that's kind of what I was playing around with. And a lot of like decoration outside already. We got some candles, pots, um, lots of plants here on this side. And then back here is just more like kind of a little working area. We got a ladder going all the way up to the top of this the, the roof here. It was a nice little project to do in between the base work and I am very excited and I hope, I really really hope that people will start building here more soon because I, I I just get excited about this stuff. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a patient person. I would like to see the end result tomorrow if possible. We have a start which is awesome. I kind of took a break from the server for a couple of weeks um, but I do have something completely new built here. Just didn't didn't really do a good job transitioning to that, but here we are. <laughs> I am also sick right now, so if uh, I sound a bit terrible, I apologize. You know, the last last season, I think I basically only built pretty things. <laughs> Rarely any ugly farms that are just there for the farm's sake. I have a shop that I'm kind of trying to work towards, and I need supplies, and this is what it's going to be. So. I did a bunch of redstone here, like this redstone chunk behind me is all um, done by me, so if it looks scuffed, that's why. But let's start at the top, because that's kind of how I built it as well, It's kind of how it works. And this is a small gold farm that is designed by Waddles. This is uh, my super safe technique of getting them angry at me. <laughs> 
Right, so this is the Waddles design. Normally you're supposed to shoot them and I think it's because of this guy over here that they get angry at you from a distance. I, honestly, I have no idea how it works. I did not pay a lot of attention to the explanation bits. But um, doesn't really work. Maybe I positioned him wrong or something. Um, so I should probably figure out how to fix that. But right now, turn that down a bit. Um, but right now I just punch them and try not to get hit too much. <laughs> yeah, but so that's the gold farm bit. Pretty simple, right? It's not AFKable because I don't really like to AFK. Um, it gives me a ton of XP. Let me actually repair my pig real quick here. There we go. Um, and I'll try to explain the redstone stuff below to you. So this right here is the general pickup. That's where all the items go through that the piglins drop. Then we have... <coughs> oh gosh. Then we have item filters. For one, the gold ingots and the gold nuggets. So this is the gold ingot chest. This is the gold nugget chest. All the red... <coughs> Sorry. That's... Yeah, I'm struggling. <laughs> all the rest. Of the items gets put into this dropper here with the comparator we activate a observer clock um, and they get thrown into the fire and destroyed the one thing that i did not think about while building this engrative is they do drop their heads sometimes and those also get thrown into the fire but every now and again like after killing a bunch i just look into this chest real quick and see if there's any and i take them out and i also don't know if we need really need piglin heads but just in case so this is the nuggets chest, right? That one leads into an, a grafter, which automatically turns them into more ingots. And they get funneled into this chest, together with the already existing ingots, and land down here in this dropper, which is facing a, a piglin. <laughs> an actual piglin, not a zombified one. Getting this guy up onto the nether roof was so difficult. <laughs> I tried doing it through portals first, but I just couldn't figure it out because <clears throat> they, you know, have to be a certain, can only be a certain distance apart in the overworld because the piglin will turn zombified after like 10 seconds. But then if they're too close, they link, don't link up correctly with the nether portal versions of themselves. So that was very frustrating and I just ended up taking him up through the hole um, that level blew into the roof and then boarding him 900 blocks over here from spawn. <laughs> I was thinking about putting more piglins in here to make it more efficient, but after how long that took, I'm just gonna stick with the one for now. If I ever feel in the mood to get another one again, then I might upgrade it, but he'll have to do right now. Um, so you have the gold ingots piling up in here, so you can press this button and it starts throwing them at this guy. <clears throat> and then every time he drops something into this chest, he gets a new ingot. Now then this down here, is our sorting system for all the piglin bartering drops. So you can probably guess at this point what the theme of my future shop will be. It's going to be all nether things. So we can have quartz and nether bricks and soul sand and crying obsidian, normal obsidian, maybe blackstone, but there's also already a rock shop. So maybe I'll just keep that for myself. <laughs> and the pearls we also don't really need to sell because they're free at the enderman farm. Um, then there's the gravel. I just, I'm thinking I'm just gonna give that to Brandy. It's not as efficient as, it as I'd like it to be, to be honest. Like, there's not a ton of stock yet. But I'm still pretty proud of it. And it's it's gonna give us some stock, at least. Um, with some patience and time. <laughs> but all the gravel, I wanna give to Brandy, because she has her concrete job. Which is a super annoying thing to stock. Um, especially because of the gravel. So having a renewable source, at least a little bit of it, will probably help her. You also get spectral arrows, quite a bit of those, a little bit of fire charges. Leather, I'm probably going to keep for myself. Not sell string, we already have from the string farm. And then iron nuggets are also just kind of nice to have for myself. But then, of course, we also get soul speed stuff and fire potions. I'll probably sell the fire potions at the shop for really cheap as well, just because I have them. But the big thing is going to be this whole speed, I think. And so, because again, I don't like to AFK really, um, <clears throat> I wanted to figure out a way to, you know, kind of keep myself busy while this is running. 
Um, and so I started by adding a basalt generator because that's also something we can sell at the shop. Um, this is a design by Schalkecraft. Both this farm and the gold farm or this generator and the gold farm are of course also linked in my description so be sure to check that out. You know, you just break the blocks. You just stand here and break the blocks. <laughs> and you know, it takes, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes until my pickaxe is almost dead. With the haste 2 beacon that I also put up. Um, and that last time gave me, I moved it all into this one chest so you can see a pretty decent amount of blocks. So that's something that I can do while, while that is running. And I'm trying to look into right now how to get like what the best way of getting warped and crimson logs and also the warped ward and the ward blocks is. I don't really, I hate those farms, you know, those three farms with the TNT. I, I don't know why, but I just don't enjoy them at all. <laughs> um, and they scare me. So I might also just start growing trees here and just breaking them down by hand. But it seems like that's also kind of stupid and would take a very long time to get proper stock. Um, but I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'll do some research. I'll do some research. But yeah, this is the beginning of my... What do you even call this? Nether factory? My nether factory. <laughs> I'm gonna take my first shulker full of basalt back home. It's always so exciting when you're starting to work up to a shop. That doesn't exist yet. I built this farm out to the south, I think, because there's not really a whole lot around here by the red road. Um, no one really lives here or anything. Um, <clears throat> and built it over Lava Lake, of course, for the spawn rates. And I hope that's a good spot, but it really didn't seem like anyone was planning on doing anything over there, and I don't think there's another gold farm close by. Um, so I'm hoping we'll find there. Um, and now since I haven't been on the server in a bit, I want to check up on things. First thing is the shop, of course. Common copper. And I should also stop at Antmont and get some more rockers. I don't even remember why I have all these shulkers in my... <laughs> Let's buy some rockets. It's still three stacks for one diamond. Very good price. Um, I'm going to do two sets. I also, for some reason, I bought so much pork chop from back so my, my utilities chest is uh, very full at the moment there's some new stuff um, around here I've been noticing already someone put in roads I think that was brattles which is very nice so there's some plots around here then here I mentioned it before Brandy now has a concrete shop this is called the Creed I think um, I love it I love these <laughs> armor stands is the Greek Grecian statues up there, very cool. And then if you go inside, look at all these details. These little colorful stalls. Wow, Hap's really a man of many talents. And there's a lot of stock available, it's very impressive. Yeah, very, very cool. I'm excited about that. Um, it's nice to have a concrete shop. Then this, I'm gonna guess ice shop. <laughs> very cool, big ice flake. Ice and snow shop. Oh, so he's got all the kinds of ice. This is also cheap. Pretty cheap, I think. And then snow blocks, snow layers, powdered snow. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, this is by far the best shopping district we've ever had. And the season, it's not that old yet. So, good job, everyone. Oh, this is a little shrimp man. Fish. I'm guessing this is Mac as well. She kind of is building a little bit of her own area over here. Um, fish and chips. That's <laughs> so cute. Okay, so you can buy fish and baked potatoes. We've got a new spawn building as well. Not as changed. <laughs> People have been working while I was away. Um, new spawn building, which looks great. And then here we are finally at Coleman Copper. Best shop in shopping district. Have we made any sales in the last three weeks? No honey, no candles. I think I should change the price on these probably, but I don't know. It's also one of those things like someone really wants to build with them, you might buy them, you know, and it just hasn't happened yet. So nothing, no sales on the honey side. Oh, we made some sales here. The copper. 
but that seems to be it. Eight diamonds, I'm not complaining, but I think we could be making more bank here in the shopping district. And I hope we will soon. <laughs> Let's see if I can restock this. There we go, restocked. And then I also wanted to... Oh yeah, look at that, looks awesome. Um, I wanted to fly over <laughs> that, that road transition is <laughs> very, very abrupt. But um, yeah, I wanted to fly over to Hobbiton, hi dragon, to check on the bee farms to make sure they're not like overflowing. Oh, um, I wonder if the shears are even still in there. Yeah, these are almost almost dead though. Need to need to fix that soon. Oh, we've got bottles lying on the floor here. Okay, so I need to empty this one out as well. One more thing that I wanted to show you is I found another type of dog. It's like a chestnut brown, dark brown one. It's uh, it's super cute. I'm starting to collect some more colors, but I know there's still so many more that I haven't seen yet. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is, I think, going to do it for today's episode. I need to rest my voice a little bit. I'll be building up more stock. And then hopefully in the next episode we can we can start the nether factory in the shopping district. Our new shop. I'm very excited. <laughs> so I'll see you then. Bye. Thanks for watching.